Over the past three months, I poured a lot of time and energy into building an app, which ultimately turned out to be a flop. Still, since I had already paid for the Apple developer license, I figured I might as well make the most of it and keep building for another year. Even though the first app ended up being a bit of disappointment, especially considering how much effort I put into it, I decided not to give up just yet. I'm not writing it off completely. After all, building the thing is just one part of the equation. Marketing is a whole different journey. I've been experimenting, mainly on TikTok for now, and if I manage to find a strategy that actually converts, I will definitely share it. At the end of the day, the mobile app game isn't a sprint. It's a marathon, right? One key takeaway from the first attempt. It is not worth spending too much time on an idea that hasn't been properly validated. So when I sat down to build my next app, I set myself a simple rule. Keep it simple and ship it in under a week. Step 1. The idea. Thankfully, this part came naturally. My wife had been looking for a good Pomodoro app to help her study, but everything she found on the App Store was either visually unappealing or locked basic features behind a paywall. That's when I thought. Maybe there's something here. This time I started with some keyword research, and surprisingly the search volumes look pretty promising. Or at least they seemed promising to me, since I'm still pretty new to this. Next up, pricing strategy. I realized one of the main issues with my previous app was the hard paywall. It probably discouraged a lot of people from using it. Since the new app didn't rely on any expensive AI APIs and the features were fairly straightforward, I decided to offer a solid free version, at least to start with. Cool. I had a concept, but I didn't want to build just another boring Pomodoro timer. Luckily, the team came together pretty quickly. I called it El Tomate and decided to center it around a fun little character, a Mexican tomato. It gave the whole thing some personality and gave me something unique to lean on when designing App Store screenshots. Hopefully, it will help catch people's attention. When it came to the features, I kept things simple. Just the core stuff I knew, I could build in a week. The ability to add and edit timers, customize work and break durations, and choose from different icons and color themes for a bit of personal flair. One thing that helped me move much faster this time, Claude. I used it to write some of the code, from the timer logic to live activities. It let me focus more on product decisions instead of getting stuck in implementation details. I also used AI to generate all the graphics in the app. Each color option got its own unique theme, with little nods to Mexican culture to tie it all together. Once the basic design was ready, it was time to tackle the core functionality, timers and notifications. And that's where I hit my biggest roadblock. Turns out Apple automatically kills background apps after a while, which meant my timer wasn't reliable. I spent more than a full day trying to hack around it. One idea I tried was adding ambient sounds to keep the app alive in the background. It worked, but it also absolutely wrecked battery life. It was a good reminder of how easy it is to go overboard. I'd already gone too far by adding music, so I scrapped everything and went back to square one. Eventually, I rebuilt the logic using a single timestamp and scheduled notifications, rather than relying on real-time triggers. It made the app way more reliable, and finally felt like the right direction. With the core working, I turned my focus to premium features, like stats and charts. Cloud helped a ton here and made it surprisingly quick to implement everything. Then came the classic imposter syndrome. Everything worked fine in theory, but I kept feeling like something was missing. Since I still had two days left, I decided to squeeze in one last feature, live activities. I thought it would be really useful to show the current timer countdown on the lock screen and figure out it might also be a good marketing angle. Instead of having to open the app, users could just glance at their phone and instantly see how much time was left. Fortunately, this part came together also pretty fast. The last stretch was getting the test flight version ready and sending it out to a few friends for testing. Thankfully, there weren't many bugs and I managed to fix the ones they found pretty quickly. In the meantime, I prepped the App Store screenshots and description. Just like that, the project was done. 
Now all that's left is to wait for the App Store to do its thing. That waiting period always feels like the longest part. You are stuck in the limbo, wondering if anything will happen, or if the app will get approved without a hitch. No matter the outcome, this project feels like a real progress. Each step, even the setbacks, are teaching me something new about building and shipping. Fingers crossed it goes smoothly, and I will catch you in the next one.